good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in this world. Welcome to this live today, the art of mastering authentic networking. And I say that slowly because we've all been in this world where we've had this ick way of networking that doesn't feel good. This is about authentic networking. This is about creating relationships, creating connections that actually feel good. So if you are somebody who's tried networking and has maybe not loved it, so you stop trying it because it makes you feel gross, or if somebody you're if somebody who's actually completely avoided it altogether because you don't like the way it makes you feel, this is perfect for you because I'm here to tell you there is a whole new way of networking that is authentic, that is genuine, that is reciprocal, that is nourishing, that opens doors for both people, both parties involved. Win-wins can actually be created. So if that is something you want for your career, for your life, I encourage you to have a seat, grab a pen, grab a notepad, because you're going to want to take notes, because I've got an amazing guest here today. I will introduce her fully, or she'll introduce herself fully in a minute here. Her name is Lauren Ashley, and she is a heart-centered community connector. She's an amazing woman. And ironically, I met her through networking. <laughs> so if you are here live, we'd love for you to say hi. Both Lauren and I can see your comments. We can see any questions that you have. And we would encourage you, ask questions if something comes up and you're like, hey, can you explain that a little bit more? Or any aha moments. And keep in mind, this is a live on authentic networking. So anybody else who is registered for this is probably looking for authentic networking connections as well. So I think both of us would encourage you connect with each other. If there's somebody in the comments, you're like, wow, they seem really cool. I'd love to connect with them. And if you're new to either of our worlds, connect with us as well, because this is really about creating a network of people who are aligned and who have those great intentions of creating win-wins, creating relationships, and just a deeper sense of fulfillment in our relationships in our career. So mm -hmm. before we dive in and, and introduce ourselves, I want to ask you all, on a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you in being able to network in a way that feels really, really good? So one being, a, I'm I'm, I've avoided it. I don't want to do it. I hate it. Ugh. The word network actually makes me cringe. <laughs> That's a one. And a 10 is, girl, I could write the book on networking. If you want to just give us an indication of where you are in there, just so we have a clue. And it's often really good just to know where your starting point is. Like, where are you starting from in this journey? Um, I mean, I'm going to share a little bit. We're going to be sharing little stories as we go through components of this life, but I can tell you how I see networking and how I viewed networking and how I approached networking three or four years ago is night and day, night and day to what I'm doing now. I actually love networking and I used to, like the mm -hmm. word used to make my stomach curl. Like I would just get knots, right? And I'm sure there's lots of you who probably are in that similar, similar position where it's the word, you know, I I often think we almost need a new word for networking, but it's the one we got right now, so we'll use it, right? So I've yep. got an 8.5 from Brittany, awesome. Hi, Helen, I've got a 2.5, I have Janet, nine or more. I'm an introvert, interesting. You know what, introverts can be amazing at networking. I mean, it's it's so interesting. I'm an introvert. Um, I'm, I'm totally, I know, you know what, and I'm an introvert mm -hmm. too, and here we are live. <laughs> Would you believe that? <laughs> I know, right? And so, Robin, we've got an eight to a nine. Awesome. So, you know, ladies, if you've got some insights as we're going through this, please share. This really is mm -hmm. conversation, right? Yeah. So I will quickly introduce myself if you are new to my world and I'm new to your world. My name is Andrea Horvath, and I'm a career transition coach. And I help badass women figure out what career or business has their name and soul written all over it. And I help them make that transition. So Lauren, if you want to take a moment and introduce yourself, that would be awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, like Andrea said, we met via networking. Um, and what I do, I, I kind of just 
explain what I do through a mission, which is to help as many women as possible experience the power of transformative connection, meaningful connection. Um, I hate the word networking too, just like Andrea does. I think it has a negative connotation to it most of the time. Um, I definitely felt the ick of it, but I'm really trying to flip that on its head and make it more about connecting and building relationship because I think that's honestly where it's at. It's what we're wired to do as humans. And somehow we've stepped really far away from that. And everything feels very transactional, especially in social media spaces a lot of the time. But it's amazing. Andrea can probably attest to this too, that even on platforms like LinkedIn, we've been able to build some really meaningful connections here that we've taken off the platform. Um, and we've really humanized what networking is about. So that's really what I stand for. And what I do when I build community is bring people together to build relationships. And now you can see why I love this woman and what she does. Because <laughs> we do, we need to bring the human into networking. I mean, the, the transactional never really worked. However, we accepted it at one point, I believe truly, right? Mm -hmm. And I won't dive into it now because we've got, you know, I wanna make sure we stick to really the meat and potatoes and what we wanted to bring here. But definitely so many people are tired of that transactional way of doing things, right? And so it really is time to, to start doing things in a new way. And this is, this is a beautiful time for this conversation. So on this live today, how we're going to do this is first thing we're going to talk about is why the transactional method of networking isn't working. And I mean, I, I would certainly argue that it never really, ha I mean, it has worked in some ways, but not if you want true fulfillment, you know, I think you can you can get things from doing that. Um, but, you know, most of the people I connect work with and work with and everything else, they're not into just getting something for the sake of getting something. Right. So why why does that not work and why we need to utilize and embrace this relational way of networking? It's so important. It is so powerful. It is so, so powerful. And the third thing we're going to talk about is how to approach a new way of networking because like how do we do that how do we actually move forward from here and actually lauren's going to share five things to look out for and sort of be aware of as you head out into networking so i'm going to dive right and ask you a question so why isn't the way we've been doing it working lauren because i think we my my first thing i'll say is i think we've been too focused on outcomes like trying to get something that's why things feel so transactional is we approach it almost from a business angle right everything becomes about work and what we're trying to get or how we're trying to navigate the world and succeed whatever that definition of success is so i feel like coming up even in business i mean i've been i graduated college over 20 years ago people don't always believe that but it was different then like we didn't have all the social media. We remember the times before all the social media where you actually had to build relationships with people. So I think for some of us, like if we can trace back, we remember a time where it was a little bit less networky and it was more relational. So I kind of draw on my prior experience of like, I actually had to talk to people. Um, I couldn't just hide behind a screen or try and leverage someone without really knowing them. So I think we've skewed way the other way um, where we've become such a capitalistic society too, where everything's about, you know, your titles, your roles, climbing the ladder, how much money you make. And we use people as stepping stones to further ourselves. Like we treat them like they're not people anymore. And I don't know about you. I, I imagine you agree that like we need more humanity in networking. That's why we don't like the word. Um, I always think of people as people, not just someone I can leverage or use in this space. Um, I think all of that stuff happens out of building relationships. I always tell women that come into my networks, like I want us to leverage one another's talents and skills. Mm -hmm. That is part of why we network but how we do it doesn't have to be so shallow. We don't come out with a sales pitch the minute we meet someone. And we know this still happens. I got oh, people yeah. dropping in my DMs on the daily trying to sell me something. And I'm like, I don't even know you. 
And for women in particular, since I serve primarily women at this point, we are relational beings. Like we like to be in a village amongst like-minded people and we like actually connecting, most of us. There are exceptions always, but I know so many women I talk to just hate the ickiness of people just, that just immediately try and get something from you. You can feel so it. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. yeah. Even or, if they don't say it, I, you can feel it. You can feel it. Or we become so jaded that we think everyone <laughs> wants something from us, right? Because that's what we're so Very used true. to. Like, you yep. just want to connect. You, you don't want something from me. You're not trying to sell me something. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> like, people are like shocked by that a lot of the times these days. And I was like, you know, it's because there is a different way. Um, it's not all about that outcome right out the gate. Like, I need something from you. I don't even know really good something from you. Yeah. It's a really good point that you bring up because I think there is a level of jadedness out there where, yeah, it's like, well, I'm just, just going to say hi. (laughs) And how are you? It's legitimately all I want to know is like, how are you? I have no idea if we're in alignment. I have no idea if you want to connect with me. I'm just saying hi. And, and there really is that jadedness. I'm also curious, like when I think about networking, so I'm curious what you think about this. I think, I think men in some ways have done a better job at it. I'm going to say that out loud. I think women, when it comes to our careers, I think we're behind. I think they've been doing it a lot longer. I'm curious mm-hmm. your viewpoint and if you have an opinion on that. I mean, I, I know I definitely could expand on it, but I'm just, I'm curious to hear what you think about that. Well, I think when you think about networking in the traditional sense, there is a really masculine energy to it, right? Especially in business. Like so many of us women too are living in our masculine energy. So it would make sense that that's how we even approach networking. Like a man would. Men are much more forward, I feel like most of the time. That's why it works well for them. It's just like, tell me what you want. And like, I'm going to tell you whether I can make that happen or not. Or I'll tell you to just go away. (laughs) But we're kind of... We want to be able to do that, yet it doesn't really sit well with us because I feel like at the end of the day, it's like that fight between the masculine and the feminine energy for us where I'm seeing more and more women lean into their feminine energy, which is why we're able to network in a different way than men do and in a way that's also as productive as what men do, just a different style. I think that's Although, perfect. Again, there's, there's exceptions too. Men, I know men. Absolutely. That are more heart-centered networking too, but that's not every man. Um, if we make generalizations, I feel like more men are much more direct. Women are trying I, to dance yeah. around things. <laughs> I agree, because I do feel like this is this is something we're trying to navigate. We're trying to figure out how do we do this? Mm-hmm. That, that feels genuine to what we desire, like you said, more relational. Mm-hmm. And I think we've been trying to fit into that male mall and it doesn't work for us. And so then we're just like, we're completely out. The problem, of course, is we're missing so many opportunities, but that's, we'll get to that next. But I think this is a really interesting conversation because we get to create whatever we want. Like we actually have that ability to go, okay, well, what works for me? And, and where do I want to go from here? Yep. What I also want to come back to is what you talked about, the outcome, because that's what I really see. And whether it's with a man or a woman, it doesn't matter who it is, we are very outcome based. And Mm -hmm. so much of what we spend our energy and time on in our world is what do I need to do to have that outcome? It's it's these two things. And the problem is we're so used to it. Like this is everywhere we look. This is the corporate world. How much can you do? Because we need you to get this over here. And that's really how mm-hmm. our minds become wired to the point that we don't even realize that's what we're doing. We're just continually yeah. going, what are the steps I can take? How are the things I can move through? I'm curious, anyone listening, is this landing with you? Like, can you almost see like the struggle with trying to do things and network in a way that doesn't feel congruent like, to who you really are and what you really desire? Um, feel free to pop to pop into the comments, but that doing to having, you know, it's part of so much what I do in the work I do with women as well is 
is there is a there's a model it's the be do have model i don't know if you're familiar with it it's a very simple model which is why i love it we spend all our energy in the have uh do to have and we don't focus on the be how do we feel what are our intentions like how do we actually want to approach this and really how do we what is our state of going into everything right so i think it's really important to note mm -hmm. yeah. awesome so, so why is it so imperative? Why is it so critical that we embrace a new way, learn a new way, like the value of networking? I mean, <laughs> at the most basic level, it's our lifeblood. You think about the things that nourish us and that sustain us and give us fulfillment. It's always human connection yet we've stepped so far away from it. We're like more connected than ever, like from a technology perspective, but like more disconnected than ever from a human perspective. We don't take the time to get curious anymore. Um, and that's always what I start with. I was like, just be curious. That's why I say disconnect from the outcome because yeah, <clears throat> networking traditionally has been about trying to drive outcomes and especially here in places like LinkedIn, you know, everyone's trying to run a business or get ahead in their career. But what if for like two minutes you forgot about trying to get ahead or what you're trying to achieve and you just thought about, hmm, could I have a really good conversation with someone um, and not attach an outcome? Could I be curious? Could I get to know them? Because honestly, I think what we do is we look at a LinkedIn profile and we know this. I have had plenty of people tell me, oh, we don't need to meet. You can just go read my LinkedIn profile. I'll tell you everything you need to know about me. Oh. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> if, if, if we're just a resume, because this is also my problem with hiring today in the US is like we're relegated to a piece of paper that's supposed to tell you everything you need to know about me as a person and what I can offer. And that's always not sat well with me, even like way back in the day. Cause I was like, we're more than a piece of paper. Um, even getting into college, you used to have to interview, right? And now it's really about what's your GPA? Can you write a good essay? Like, what does your CV look like? And I'm like, that doesn't tell you anything about me as a person. It tells you what I'm able to achieve, produce. And what you have done. That. <laughs> yeah, this is what I've done. It's really what you've done in the past, like, yeah. Yeah, it's not what I want to do, or it's like, it, there's no curiosity there. I think that's the big missing piece is we're just not curious anymore. Mm -hmm. And that became kind of an obsession for me. Like, I would have to tell people, no, I'm just genuinely curious about your story. Like, how did you get to where you are? There's a story behind the story of your LinkedIn profile. Everyone has one. Everyone, mm -hmm. even if you think you're ordinary especially the women I connect with. I was like, there is a story there. There's a reason you're following this passion. And yeah, you're doing this thing right now, which is really cool, but how did you get to do that thing? So that's kind of how I started approaching it was just be curious. Because even if I think I have an outcome in mind, like you might be my ideal client, I'm much more interested in your story because one, I might be wrong, you might find that you're not aligned or you see something else completely different that you didn't even know you were going to find. And the outcome may be completely different. You might be like, oh my gosh, this person's a perfect collaborator. They're not a client. You never know. So it's like when you have an open mind about where that conversation could go, I just see possibility. When you stick to outcome, it's kind of, I don't know, it just feels like it's going to be a transaction and you're just looking for that one thing. You're looking to check that one box. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. When we talked the first time, we didn't know. I was just like, no. you seem like a really interesting person. I want to know your story. What are you trying to do? And then it became like, how do we collaborate? We have similar missions. And these are all the, yeah. the fun parts of networking. As you start to see these little intersections or areas mm -hmm. where you want to go deeper with someone than the transaction it becomes more about more than just the outcome you're building I, a relationship i think something that's come come as i was listening to you because i'm a very curious person it's so interesting it keeps coming up in conversation lately curiosity i actually believe is one of the things 
that is completely underutilized, completely underutilized. We've come as a society that, we, like you said, we've, we've decided whether it's their resume, whether it's their profile, whether it's just how they look, how they talk, how they mm-hmm. dress, whatever it is, we've decided their their story and maybe their value or whatever it might be. And I'm the same as you. Every woman I spoke to, speak to, I am blown away by their story and the depth to them mm-hmm. that we just do not see. But the flip side of that is, is a lot of desire for control. You know, I think a lot of the reason why we're not curious is because if you look around too, the world feels a little bit, you know, kind of wonky right now. So we're trying to almost control everything in whatever way we can. And then we've decided exactly as you say, this person's going to fit. This is this is what I need from this relationship. And we don't know. I mean, you and I may have connected and went, eh, you know, we're not aligned. That's cool. And you kind of go yeah. on your merry way, right? But I didn't foresee this. I didn't certainly go into it thinking I need Lauren on the live. This just happened no. very organically going, God, I just feel like Lauren, like what you need to say, people need to hear. And I want to like give you a place to say that, like I, that makes me happy because I do agree. I think we've gotten to a point and there's so many people right now who are unfulfilled. I mean, this is, this is what I do all day and night, right? So many people mm-hmm. who are unfulfilled in their careers. Right. Because it has been so outcome based. It's been based on what I can put on my resume. Mm -hmm. Yet, why are we not enjoying the journey? Because if we're not enjoying the journey, what's the point? And this to me is enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. This is this is part of actually having a rich and rewarding life. Is rich and rewarding relationships, not just in personal. We work way too much yep. to be able just to be transactional. And I know I speak to so many women and something that often comes up is they feel a lack of connection in their career. You know, they go to work and it's just morning. You know, if you sometimes if you can get, I, mean, I remember when I was in corporate, I'd be in my office, people would walk in and not even say good morning. <laughs> it's, no. like, it's, it's just like, yeah. what, what, it's this weird world I live in. Like, <laughs> Like you mm-hmm. literally just passed me. <laughs> it's and wild. It, it really? It's really the corporate world. And I mean, it's because I was in corporate, like, you know, I mean, for a lot of my career, it it's really fostered this. And also mm-hmm. I believe social media is just another element. So between the two, we live in this kind of weird little world right now. Yeah. So it's, it's a very strange place. So I say um, the lost art of connection is something I say to a lot of people. It's like, we don't know how to do this anymore. That's why it feels icky. Like we have, we've gotten so far away from it. We kind of don't remember what it's like. And I always joke in my community because I'm in that weird generation that's kind of on the cusp. Like I remember a time, like I said, before social media and the internet, like Mm -hmm. when I was a kid, we didn't have internet. When I was in college, we had dial up Mm -hmm. internet. So it wasn't a thing we relied on. We had to actually have conversations. So I just joke, I go, I take it a little old school in the way I operate because I remember those times. I remember when things were a little bit more simple and we could just pick up the phone and have a conversation. And that's the beauty of networking to me is like focusing on the conversation. So when I approach networking, if we want to call it that or connecting, it's always about how can I start a really interesting conversation? Because I've seen something about you that's intrigued me, right? That's usually where we start. There's something in your profile. Um, there's something that you're saying, or maybe I posted a, a message on one of your posts that because it resonated. Mm, yeah, That might be where we, where we start because you're like, you're speaking my language. I've told Andrea numerous times, she posted one video that just like keeps living in time because the message was so powerful and it resonated with so many of the women that I knew where I was like, I want to share this. They start commenting on it. I share it amongst my group. And it's like this whole thing, like where you say you meet someone and you're like, more people need to hear what she's Mm -hmm. saying. Cause this is, this makes a lot of sense. And she's saying the things that people aren't saying, which I always appreciate, but it's that 
you're looking for that little spark of connection. Like, yeah, I really like that you said that. And how can I build a conversation around that? Not try and work, worry about what outcome's going to come out of this. Because we weren't thinking about that. I was just like, I need to know this person. Yeah. I and think it's really it becomes fun. It, it, it does. It becomes a, it actually is fun. And, and that's one of the transformations I've had. I've gone from it being feeling ick to like, I actually really like doing this. And no one's more surprised than I am. I never thought I would actually enjoy it, but it's mm -hmm. actually one like I, the, my, the way my business is changing itself. I want collaborations because I see two or three or however many of us getting together and, and working together is so much more powerful. And I mean, especially I work with women who want to change, whether it's the world or their own life or whatever it is, but they want better. They want to yeah. shine their light. They want to heal. They whatever that looks like for them, right? Which is which is beautiful. But I think what you said is really really important. Is we have forgotten how to do that. And I mean, I have a theory. I think I think one of the reasons, well, certainly is social media. But I also think, you know, the corporate world. I mean, I have my beast with the corporate world. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie here, because we do mm -hmm. this thing where we don't say what we're really thinking. The corporate world's really built to fit in. So yeah. when you're fitting in, you are saying what you believe is supposed to be said, to be accepted. And there's a lot of reasons why this happens, a lot of fear and that kind of thing. My thought is, I mean, when I was in corporate, that was one of the things I really didn't like, was the fact that we just yeah. spoke this weird language. <laughs> we didn't really like, yeah. I don't know, it's the weirdest thing, right? We speak these little we have these like little lingo terms and all this terminology and like, what does it all mean? But we don't actually ever get to the root of what we're trying to communicate. And I think there's so many of us that are just used to this. Like we just say things in this formatted kind of pre, pre-calculated way without just like really connecting going, like you said, like, I'm just really curious. Like that's, that is just so honest to me. Like that is just, there's no filter there. I think that's just that we've had to wear a mask so often in corporate that it's like, take the mask off and just be a human and just go, I'm curious about you. Mm -hmm. And, and doesn't have to mean anything or it could mean a lot. Who really knows? And just being in that space. But we almost have to recognize that this is what's been happening over here. And that's maybe, I think, one of the reasons why we've forgotten how to do this. But it's actually mm -hmm. just returning back to our humanity, just actually being a person. Yeah. You know, just seeing that this is another human being in front of me. And we can just relate mm -hmm. on that real deep, um, I don't mean, deep's not even the right word. It's just authentic, I guess is the right word. That real authentic way yeah. of just saying, this is me. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to hide behind any mask. Yeah. And I think it's that's a lot of, it's a lot of what ahead. we do. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a exactly lot of what we it. do. Yeah. And it's, and it's time. I think so many people are ready for this now. Like they're just ready to take off that mask because it's suffocating. Right. And it's not leading to those rich and rewarding careers or, or lives or whatnot. So, so let's dive into next. Okay. So if, if you're somebody watching this, what, how would you approach this? If you were, you know, wanting to start cultivating stronger relationships and networking? I mean, aside from the uh, curiosity, like <laughs> boost your curiosity or approach it from curiosity, um, I would say getting really clear on what it is you're trying to achieve um, and having some alignment with where you're going um, and not seeing everything obviously as a transaction. Relationship building is kind of an art these days. Um, it's not always obvious how you're going to connect with someone. And I think that's been the unlock for me was curiosity hats on all the time. Um, there's so many interesting people. I meet interesting people every single day. And some you're just like, where have you been my whole life? Kind of interesting. Like we have so much in common and there's so many intersections and that's the thing. Um, and I think particularly for any women that are wanting to up their networking game 
as much as we're here for professional reasons on LinkedIn in particular, women always have an intersection of personal and professional. There is no disconnecting the two things. And I think that's where we have to understand, to your point, we are whole humans. And yeah, we might do this thing professionally, or we're trying to do this thing professionally, but our personal life, our personality comes into play a lot. And those are the things that you usually end up talking to women about. Who are you? Not just what you do. Because that's what I'm interested in. Like, that's why I say go beyond the LinkedIn profile. If you can get someone off platform, the chances that you're going to build a relationship like skyrocket exponentially. If you're just going to have a brief little chat on LinkedIn and be like, hey, I like what you do. It seems like you're doing something really impactful. Like go deeper, ask more questions. That's the curiosity piece. Because I feel like we just kind of hit them with one thing. We don't ask questions. We're just kind of like, yay, nice, nice to be connected. And it's like a numbers game. That's what it feels like. Just the more people I have, or we want to connect with people because they have a lot of connections and that's good for me. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm getting in front of more people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think one of the things you said there really, I mean, a lot of things you say hit home. I think curiosity just feels like the, the, the buzzword of this, this conversation is something to really remember, but mm -hmm. Something I, I do when I work with clients is also tap into this notion, like we've got this idea that like, you're, here's your career, okay, here, here's your career, and here's your personal life. And there's this been this notion that the two are separate. And how dysfunctional it, that really is. We, yeah. It's like we're supposed to disconnect from who we are for 40 to 50 hours of the week. Wait, <laughs> how do like that's not healthy. Like at its core, it's actually not healthy for us to be doing that. Like it's really kind of saying this part of me does not even exist. This is just this thing over here. However, my work, I'm this person. And we need to recognize that, you know, wherever you, wherever you go, there you are and you are yeah. you. And yeah. And I, and it's moving beyond. I mean, so much of what you're talking about, I think is just, like shattering a lot of these old paradigms that we've had. That's how I always look at this. It's like we've been conditioned to work in a certain way or to show up and work a certain way and function a certain way. And all these things we have been programmed to do and we've been conditioned to do over time because it's been repeated over and over again. And it's like we have to be consciously aware that there is a new way of doing things. And of course, find the roadmap to get there. But but first, even recognize mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be this way, right? Nope. It surely doesn't have to be this way. Um, it kind of feels like a game sometimes. The only way I can put it, it's like it networking feels like a game. And more and more, I'm talking to women that are so uninterested in playing the game in any way in their life. Like I do not want to yeah. show up inauthentically in any way. I can't anymore. I'm exhausted. I'm burned out. I can't do it. So we're getting to have these really powerful conversations with that framework of like, I, I just can't be anything else. Cause I feel like that is what corporate has bred in a lot of us, especially women. It's like, we need to be different things in different places. And I don't know about you and anyone who's listening, but I always have this massive red flag pop up in my head when I meet someone who is one way in their job and then there's someone completely different in their personal life. Because I've experienced this with bosses I've had where they're terrible at work, they're a micromanager, they're the least fun people, you never get to know them, they're not curious about you, but then you go to like a work party and they're like the life of the party and they're like the nicest person. <laughs> they're like a complete 180 and you're like, where have you been this whole time? Like, I actually would have liked this person at work. <laughs> That's the world we live in right now. And I think we're kind of caught in the middle right now a little yeah. bit where it's like, oh, I, yeah. need, I need to be so buttoned up in my professional life. And I can be a little bit more like fly by the seat of my pants and fun in my personal life. And I was like, there's kind of a, there's a middle ground there. Um, and all the best leaders I've worked with in corporate were people that were curious, were fun were transparent, but also could hold boundaries, right? That's really the big yeah. thing. And that's, you, yeah. that's, that's a thing across the board. Like we all need to have boundaries, 
even in networking, right? So this is another good point of you can say no. <laughs> yeah, and actually, I want to I want to park that for a moment because I want to come back to that because I think part of this conversation also is around like how do you feel out? Like we're going to get to that. Like how do you feel out what it's going to be a good networking? But I agree, it's like we're in this middle ground. And I think that's exactly a lot of what this conversation is about. It's like, yeah, what, what we've been taught to do doesn't work. But we don't quite, we're not quite where we want to be yet. And how, how do you actually get there? Being somebody else at work or doing that networking with a, um, a mask on is exhausting. And I think that's one thing that I'm hearing a lot is that women are exhausted from not being able just to be like, this is me. Or, you know, go to work and go, you know what? I'm tired today. And that being okay, instead of going, no, I'm here. Like, like <laughs> right. And just being able to like own and be, and be ourselves. So it's just, I think we're really in that transition period. And I think it's just an opportunity for all of us just to start stepping into that, right? Like to actually take the steps one step at a time, one thing at a time mm -hmm. to start moving towards because you know how I look at this is this this corporate world and social media isn't going to change unless we change. Like it's not going to all of a sudden change and become a different thing. You know, I think we often look at corporations to change. We want, you know, we you hear, you know, and of course LinkedIn's a great place for this. You know, complaining about companies. Well, the company's not going to change if people keep going into the jobs and conforming to what the company wants. That's yeah. not how this goes. We can't actually wait. It's actually starting to do a lot of these things on our own. And that's actually how we create the change. But it's up to all of us, right, to be that voice or to be that person to start doing things differently. It doesn't have to be all at once. And in fact, I would encourage it not to be all at once because <laughs> that can really put yep. your nervous system out of whack, right? It can really kind of unsettle. But mm -hmm. it's starting to, to navigate a new path in a new way trying something on going, how does this feel? Oh, this feels good. Or maybe it doesn't feel so good. And, you know, to your point, just be curious and be okay if something doesn't work out. Like if you try something and it doesn't work out, well, whatever, right? We'll just try something different or maybe it was the wrong person or the wrong approach or whatever it might be. And just almost see it as a learning because we are navigating yeah. some new territory here. But I'd love for you to start sharing the the five things to look out for and maybe and I don't know how you're going to do this but I'd love for you also to share in there like the opposite like a flip of um what people may have experienced mm -hmm. that doesn't work if you can kind of weave that in that would if you can that would be awesome yeah so yeah, take it away. yeah I mean the place I always love to start when I talk about networking or connecting we'll come up with a new word we haven't found one yet that's the right word but values shared values um you think about all the people you want to be in relationship with or that you have been in relationship do relationships work with people you don't share values with never <laughs> pretty much never, never. <laughs> you look back on any romantic relationship or friendship you've had and why it's ended there's probably been some misalignment of values and it's yep. sadly like not the first place we look when we're building relationships, even though it's kind of the foundation of what a good relationship is. So I always tell people align with people that share some of your core values. And if you don't know what those are, that's the first place to start. What right? is important to you? Cause it's amazing how many women I'll talk to that, you know, life gets busy and we get really misaligned and we don't even know what we value anymore. That was me like four years ago. hundred oh, like, percent. And yeah, that's actually some of the work that I do with women. We go through our values because you're a hundred percent right. If you are misaligned, wherever you are misaligned without in your values in your life, there's going to be dis, there's going to be some sort of disconnect. There's going to be some sort of, and I say there's an inner turmoil. When you are living a life that is out of alignment with your core internal values, you will feel that internal battle. Like you'll never feel really settled and peaceful and harmonious. Yet, like I, for me, I think values is such a like, whatever. It can be just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> this yeah. is key. 
this is not a minor thing, but we've all become so disconnected from our own values. Very. And it makes me think about my own lack of alignment, right? Because I feel like this is something we all go through, probably men too, where we feel out of alignment. And I really had to do a deep dive into my own values again. I maybe never even done it, to be honest. And connection is one of my core values. Big surprise, right? Like I thrive on connection. That's not going to be everyone's core value. But when I'm in transactional relationships, that is a trigger for me. That's how I know I'm out of alignment, right? So I'm looking for like the flip side of that value. I'm like, oh, why does this not sit well with me? Why is this person not sitting well with me? Because they're treating me like a transaction. And that's never going to sit well with me. They're not my people. And it's holding the boundary of saying no to those kinds of people mm -hmm. too. And this Shoot. is where I say the flip side of not having shared values is basically saying yes to everyone and making networking a game. This is a numbers game. I'm going to rack up as many people as I can. I don't really care if we're aligned. It's all about the outcome. I just need to get in front of more people. And that's I was like, uh, they're not going to be the right people. Especially if you're trying to run a business too, or get ahead, like you're not going to want to be in a bunch of people's feeds that aren't aligned with you. <laughs> like, think about it. it like, I mean, actually, yeah, exactly. You can actually look at the outcome in this case and go, exactly. If I'm connecting with you and you're totally, say you had lack of integrity, integrity is my top value. Well, anybody yeah. that connects with you probably is not going to have integrity. Why would I actually want my world surrounded yeah. by that? You know, but I think now something else you're being said, flooded with them. I know, right? And then I'm like, well, networking didn't work. It's like, well, exactly. or didn't so really feel good. But I think something you said there really also stands out for me is like, you start to feel into it. And I think this is one of the things that happens when you start networking and really authentically is when you start to connect to somebody, it's like, how do you feel? And listen to that. Do you feel gross? Chances are they're not in integrity, are they're not in alignment somehow. But you you know, but it and but also being aware of what you mentioned earlier about like some of us are just jaded. So it's also a bit of a dance yeah. there, but but really feeling into their energy and feeling into what and not always what they say. Because <laughs> people can say all the right things. We've got to start listening to our intuition. But I don't want to take this over. I want you to make sure you keep on going, but just lots of ideas were popping into my head. Yeah. No, and I'd say, you know, just to finish up and round out that topic is like you don't want to be connected to everyone either right think about that i get exhausted by thinking about like trying to have too many people in my network and especially the wrong people so i'm like use some discernment and that's why i say shared values is like the easiest way you can tell by what people are posting about or what their profile may say if there's something there like, yeah, it looks like we align, but that's why I say curiosity takes you that step further. Mm -hmm. Have a conversation because you might have an idea that that might be a person you want to connect with, but then you might have a conversation and be like, yeah, actually, no, yeah. like their whole profile was BS. Like they're not the person they say they are. And a lot of that you, you won't know until you know the person. So I say, get them off Dis the platform. And discernment. I think that's a really key word. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get they go in a place of judgment. It's not about judging somebody that they're not worthy. Because I think people don't put boundaries up because they think they're being judgy. This is what I have perceived. It's like, no, it's just deciding, is this person in alignment? That's it. Does it make them yeah. bad? Does not make anything, you know, anybody wrong? Because we've been living in a world of polarity, right? If you don't agree with mm -hmm. me, there's something wrong with you. Or if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. It's like, no, no, no. We're just discerning. Nope. Is this person in alignment with me? Yes or no. Do I feel good when I'm around them? Yes or no. If you feel like garbage around somebody all the time, chances are they're not the person to yeah. be spending a lot of energy putting into. So I love that you brought up that word discernment. It's, a, I, I, I'm a huge fan of that word. Yeah, discernment. And the last one is energy. I was like, I am always looking mm. for energy radiators and I try and keep energy vampires out of my <sighs> circle. We know who they are. Like when you energetically you around people, you're just like, no, or you feel depleted, drained. I'm like, why would you want these people in your network? You want people that radiate energy that makes you want to be around them. And you know that only through getting to know them. 
right? Very, very You're, good point. If somebody's draining you, they're not. Watch mm -hmm. how you feel around people. I think it's so important. And I'm like, this is your network to curate, to cultivate. So it's completely up to you who you let in and who you maybe kick out. And it's okay to disconnect from people that are not in alignment. It's actually something I've told lots of people to do. I was like, you can do an audit. I try and connect with every person. So when I'm like, I want to connect you with someone, I've actually had a conversation with them. So I'm not just blindly connecting you with someone that I think looks like a cool connection. <laughs> I it's know. It's so true. Yeah. And it's so true. There's just almost a stigma about like even having connections here. And that's kind of a really superficial word of, you know, use of the word connection, but on LinkedIn, like if there's somebody whose name pops up, and you don't feel good, like you can disconnect from them. It's not immature. It's actually, like you said, you're curating. It's not judgment, but you're, you want to curate and be discerning and align yourself with people that we, yeah, where they do radiate because that's the beautiful part. When that happens, when you both come and you're both radiating, guess what happens? This, like the two come together and you're automatically just raised up yep which is which is the magic like true magic too right yeah it's really powerful it's very powerful. so i'm like i could talk about values a lot <laughs> but i think the second thing i always tell people to look for is diversity but not in the way we think about Ooh. diversity today yeah. because diversity <laughs> has become really buzzy no because we automatically go to like different um different race, different lived experience. Yeah. So like, yeah, all that stuff matters. And I'm always looking for that. But to me, it's about perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but like, I don't want to live in an echo chamber of people that are like carbon copies of me. Values gets me in alignment with the right people, but diversity opens me up to different perspectives. So the value is the tie, but then I'm like, oh, perspective what can they offer um i want to learn and grow most of the women i know want that too and we don't learn and grow from being around people that have the exact same perspective as us maybe shared values right and you have some alignment and you feel the same way about a lot of things but they also have something to offer to you right they open your eyes to something are you like to hear them talk are you like their perspective those are all things i tell people to look for because that makes for a really interesting conversation and it helps you detach from outcome because you're like i just like talking to this person i don't know what's going to happen but i love your perspective and you think about it like at the end of the day as human beings every human being wants to be heard seen and valued period why you you know when you're around an energy radiator right they have a way of making you feel heard seen and valued like you matter. Yeah. And that's what I try and do for people. Like that's important to me that when you're in spaces, like I'm there with you. You do. I'm that not multitasking. Well. I'm not trying to do other things. I'm yeah. trying to be there. Um, because we're all trying to do all the things all the time, but there's a difference. And we all know this when you meet those people where you're just like, yeah, I could talk to you for hours and you keep going down all these rabbit holes like that is the fun of connecting and that is the fun of like diversity to that perspective it's like wow we can just like rabbit hole on all these different things i probably need to schedule 16 calls with you to actually know all that i want to know <laughs> and sometimes we do um so diversity is Very big cool. for me um the third thing i always look for is just like a general feeling of support like is this a supportive person is this someone who likes to answer questions um likes to offer encouragement because i feel like we all need that and we want to offer it up to most of us when we do this heart-centered type of networking um if we're not supportive of one another like what are we doing this for and that's why i talk about collaboration over competition a lot too because we know there's a there's an undercurrent of competition, especially amongst women. And we've all worked in probably corporate environments where we've experienced this firsthand. Women trying to put other women down or not support them or pretend. But then at the end of the day, they're like, they see you as competition. So they're not really gonna give you a leg up. 
I'm trying to dispel all that, like that there's another way. It doesn't have to be that way. We can support one another. Um, and we all have a secret sauce in some way <laughs> or a magic. Mm -hmm. And we need to encourage that in one another. Oh, that's and shine so a light good. on it sometimes. <laughs> so good. You are talking my magic. language now. This is so my language because mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do as well is really dispel this whole competition. Like I'm so passionate about mm -hmm. supporting other women because, yeah. you know, there's a lot of reasons why, and I won't go down that rabbit hole of why, how we've got to that place. Cause there's a lot of reasons why, however, it's just time to change. Like it's just, there is, again, there's this new way of doing things. I think engagement is also a word that popped in as I was listening to you. People who are mm -hmm. like encouraging, but also like in, engaging. And like you talked about like being fully present, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, they're, they're there. They're not distracted. And in, you know, in the, in the doing state of multitasking, which really doesn't exist <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Are they fully present? and fully connected and engaged in that moment and bringing their energy forward, but a hundred percent supportive and seeing that we all have light, which is amazing. And Cheryl said the connection should be mutually beneficial. Absolutely. There's that energy exchange that always needs to happen. Right. And it's not always perfect at all times, but that's not what it's about. But overall, mm -hmm. there needs to be some balance there. Right. Well, and I, I think too, like, we talked about moving away from outcomes with networking because that kind of brings in some of the ick factor. But I think another way we can kind of approach that with still sort of an outcome in mind and continuing the connection, because that's what I'm big on. It's like, we don't do one and done is what I will always say. I was like, I'm not going to be the person that pops into your feed and is like, hey, see you later. That was fun. I want to <laughs> keep it going. But even asking the simple question, how can I support you right now? And that doesn't always mean that I'm going to like, go get you your next job or become your client. But like, for me, it's usually like, who can I introduce you to? Or what other conversations are you looking to have? Or can we continue this conversation? And I don't think we do that enough. Um, certain women, like we've gotten really good at it. Like, how do we, how do I support you? Uh, what do you need? Uh, can we keep this conversation going? Because eventually through enough connecting, you find ways to either collaborate or just be a sounding board for one another sometimes, or you just find that you really like what the person's about and you become friends. And that's the other thing of networking. I'm like, it's not always going to be professional. Mm -hmm. I found people that I'm like, they're like my friends now. I just genuinely enjoy talking to them. I don't know that we'll ever do anything professionally together, but that's value to me because they enrich my life. I think something that's really important and something, a concept that I've really been embracing is yeah, focusing on the, the being, how do I show up to stuff? But ultimately, actually, the outcomes still come. They actually do. It's just the focus isn't on the outcome. But it happens, especially if you're working, you know, you're connecting and networking with people who are, you know, have radiating energy and have some aligned goals. It's inevitable. And I think that's the part that we miss. Just because you're not focusing on it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But it's not the primary goal. But it mm -hmm. still happens. And we're often so focused on that outcome. But yeah, you can, how do I support you? How to like, how, it just, it happens, but it's more from that heart centered, really giving space. And then yeah. that, that magic happens between you, right? Well, and if it's a genuine connection, like, you know that that's authentic when they're asking you that question. It's not yeah. just like, I'm not doing it to, do it. I'm just saying, how good. can I support you? <laughs> I have been on the receiving end of some of those where I'm like, I know you're ultimately trying to get something when you ask me that question. But I was like, if you're you genuinely it. trying to connect in this way, you know, when the person means it, like, what can I do? Um, you can feel it in the energy. So that's huge for me. The other thing I always look for is opportunities for growth, right? Most of the women I connect with, like we are lifelong learners and we're always tapping into one another um, for something. And it's like, it could be energy. Like, I love being in your energy. I'm like growing in some way being around you. I look for those things. I say, everyone should look for those things. Mm -hmm. Do they give you an opportunity to be a better you or learn something 
um, up level in some way, or maybe challenge you in like a really productive way. We all need that. Um, so yeah, are they helping you grow into the person you want to be? And as a community builder, that's a huge piece of what I'm looking for is like, we're creating an ecosystem where we can help one another learn and grow. Yep. And I think even I in personal networking, that's true. I always say like, we're not meant to do this alone. And we have mm -hmm. to stop pretending that we can, mm -hmm. or that it's okay to, we're, we're not, we're really not. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I think the last thing I really focus on is, I feel like we all have a personal mission. All of us that are trying to network in this way, whether it translates into what we're doing professionally or it's just our personal mission statement. But I find that when you connect in this way, every woman has an impactful mission she's working towards. And it's getting curious around what that is and being in alignment around it, right? You naturally gravitate towards the people that are trying to do powerful things in the world or want to make change. And I say I tend to attract a lot of change makers because we're disrupting a lot of things in a lot of ways all, all the time. You're a disruptor. Yeah. I'm a disruptor. Like this whole conversation is about disrupting what is the status quo. So finding more people that align in missions, um, what they what kind of impact they want to have, like those are really powerful connections. Even if you're not doing the same thing, you're just like, whoa, I can really get behind that. And I like want to be around that kind of energy. So I think, again, to discernment, what are these people really about? What mission are they trying to serve in their lives personally or professionally? And is it the kind of thing you want to be a part of? Because then you naturally want to support it. You're like, right? I know lots of women trying to create movements or do things in a completely different way than the status quo. And I'm always a huge supporter of that. It's like, how do I do that? Um, it's like we we create our own little armies yeah, and we, we figure out ways to support each other. Yeah, we yeah. support each other because it's all it's all in the um, the intention of creating a better world. And mm -hmm. there's so many different areas of this world that this that needs to happen in, and we can go a lot further together. Hundred percent. I'm curious. Anybody have any questions? We're getting we're getting close to the hour here. I think we could probably talk forever about this. Um, if you have any questions, you know. And as I was listening to the last part of your talk, I think this is all about really, like you said, getting really clear on your intentions of what you're looking for. And then just being you. Like, I think that's just a lot of what this is. It's going, okay, knowing all those five things, which are beautiful, and they're really, really important, you know, finding that alignment. But then just like showing up and say, like, how are you? I love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And just like, honestly, just it, just this, this level of liberating, like just saying what you're thinking, right? It can feel a little bit vulnerable, like to be honest, I think, especially if you've had a mask on, but that's really all it, all it really is, is you want to think if you're sitting here watching this going, well, how do I really start this? It's really just being yourself and just opening up a conversation. And, and you'll know soon enough if somebody's on board with that or not. Like if they're just like, mm, it's too, you know, weird for me or whatever. Cool. That's, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Keep, you know, keep moving on to find the people that are heart centered. And as I said, connect with Lauren and I, if you see somebody else here, connect with them and just start that. And, you know, even hop on a call. Say, do you want to hop on a zoom call? 15 minutes and have a coffee. You know, I think of that's how so many, especially in this world now when we're in LinkedIn, we're all over the world. That's how so many of these things start. It's just, let's just hop on a Zoom call and have a coffee, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever that looks like and just see if we have something to talk about and what's your story. So that's kind of what my thoughts are. If you're like, hey, you know, how do I actually go from this and see what happens? And some people will want to and some people won't. And that's okay because we're filtering. We're filtering out which yeah. of the people, you know, that could really help and cultivate and have a good relationship, right? So exactly. Awesome. Like, and you can test it out with the test it out with the women right here. Start a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> ask, ask a exactly. Question. 
Exactly. No, that's perfect. Right. And, and, and you know what? Trial and error. Some are going to work. Some aren't going to work and whatever. Right. You just kind of keep going. There's lots of, you know, connections where I've made where it's great. You know, I've had a lovely chat with you, but you know, we're not in alignment. Cool. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they're a bad person again. Doesn't mean anything. It just means that we may not be yeah. in alignment. Right. So yeah, go. I would encourage, I would encourage anyone to reach out, connect to anybody that they see here. And again, to Lauren and I, this video will, um, if you've you know, only caught the end of it or, or missed parts of it or want to go back and rewatch it, it was recorded. It will be on my profile as well as I will be loading it to my YouTube channel as well uh, within the next couple of days. So if it's a recording you want, just fire me a DM and I'm happy to send you the link. Or if there's somebody else you know in your network <laughs> um, mm -hmm. relationships that you have that is struggling with this, you know, please feel free to share it. And, and really, this is about like, you know, like Lauren says, like we're creating an army here. It's an ecosystem. Let's, you know, the more people we have approaching it, this is how we actually, this is how we change the landscape in truth. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for, for joining us. And thank you, Lauren, for taking the time. I knew this would be, um, I, you're amazing. <laughs> this woman's so amazing. <laughs> Honestly, it's like mutual like, admiration society here. <laughs> I and I will, I will invite anyone who's listening. If you're still like on the fence or scared to do this, start with one of us. Yeah. We'll, totally. we'll be, we'll take the training wheels off yeah. and we can introduce you to people that you'll have an amazing conversation with. Yeah. And usually that's all it takes. You kind of got to rip the bandaid off and then you realize how much fun this is and off, off you go. Yeah, I love that invitation. And I'm, I definitely echo that. Just start with one of us and uh, mm -hmm. go from there. So hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and um, take care.